place of drop is bear, 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 down at the top. Smash the like button. Goodbye. Hail to all. Hail to all. This is Bear at Bear, Bear Nerd Fun. How you doing? Well, I've been perusing the interweb and uh, seeing what most news rags are saying about Star Trek Picard. Well, Star Trek, Star Trek Picard recap. Getting the band together. You notice it's not saying getting the band back together. Yeah. Yes, John Luke officially begins his quest and looks for more comfortable than he did at the vineyard. Yeah, sees. Season 1, Episode 3, The End is the Beginning. Well, I'm not going to really get totally into this article, but one thing that kind of struck me about this is the first three episodes of Star Trek Picard feel like a long pilot unto themselves. Well, you could take, in my opinion, I've watched first three episodes, you could take those first three, cut out all the unnecessary minutia, we'll call it, and um, you could uh, splice those together and out of those three maybe you might have 40 minutes 41 minutes and um, would it make it better no um, would it pace better maybe maybe but um, uh, why is hyperspace in Star Trek you know, I don't, I don't get that. Um, every Star Trek TV show, other than the 2009 reboot, the JJ Trek, um, there was regular warped field, warp stars, traveling at warp speed. Uh, we see it in the Next Generation. Um, we've seen it in all the all the Next Generation, next generation uh, shows. So. Uh, apparently uh, falling on my tongue there a bit. So you got Deep Space Nine, you got Voyager, and they all showed. And you notice in Voyager, um, some of the the warp fields was slightly different. Uh, and in, in Enterprise, the warp fields were slightly different because you know that was supposed to be, you know, the first warp five uh, starship. And so, um, I'm not feeling very what you call. I'm not even feeling nostalgic about this show. Uh, after I get done watching Picard, uh, I feel like I gotta watch the Expanse, the wash out of Picard, a little bit. But you know, I'm gonna watch, gonna review it, gonna check this out, and check that out, and uh, make a video, you know, and uh, review it, have you will. So. I was checking out some of the reviews for um, uh, Star Trek Picard Remembrance. Strange but fitting reviewed it. Uh, he he. Uh, it looks like he gave a nine out of ten. Only the first episode of a very anticipated show, yet people have a lot of doubt about it. After having been disappointed by Discovery, um, yeah, that's that's a really good point. Uh, in the back of their minds, we have what man, full of confidence, determination, that is the master of situation, the captain we all knew till Nemesis. But now Picard is 94 years old, and anyone can tell he isn't the fittest anymore. And as Patrick Stewart put it, Picard is old disappointed he has lost his way and you can tell the situation which Picard has set is set up for a great new Trek show yeah it pre pretty much you know 42 out of 76 found this helpful I find the first two paragraphs uh, revealing um, I think this reviewer probably was holding back I think he was afraid of whiplash um, yeah definitely holding back you know, for sure. So I've been uh, finding a couple different articles, and John Trent wrote an article about four days ago. 
Uh, rumor CBS discussing replacement for Alex Kurtzman on Star Trek by John F. Trent. A new rumor indicates that CBS is already discussing a replacement for Alex Kurtzman when it comes to Star Trek. In fact, the rumor indicates that Sherry Redstone, the chairman of the board following the CBS and Viacom merger, has already axed Kurtzman. Man, we can only hope, hope, pray to the Star Trek gods that this has happened. Yeah. Uh, rumor comes from Twitter user Oliver Frank 10 who writes, Okay, folks, new rumors for you. Fresh from my source, not even an hour old, but take take as rumor only. I'll, I'll assume that's what that's meant to mean. They add, spread the word, my friends. Redstone decided to ask Kurtzman. Yes, you have heard right. Apparently, CBS is already discussing who should replace Kurtzman as the head of Star Trek. Oliver Frank 10 then detailed just who his source tells him is on CBS. Shh. Shortlist to take over from Kurtzman. That list includes Ira Stephen Bear, Ronald D. Moore, Doug Drexler. Now, the first two? Yeah. I'll have to look into Doug Drexler. I can't remember. You know, old memory. I'll have to look into Doug. Oliver Frank 10 then warns the rumors about Redstone coming. Canning Star Trek completely if Picard fails are unfounded. They write she doesn't intend to do that. Then they detail that the rumors swirling from 4chan regarding Seth MacFarlane's attempt to purchase Star Trek are just that, rumors. And there is no validity to them. All of Frank 10 then details that the news about Kurtzman Exit may surface around June with more details possibly arriving in May and Star Trek destinations. In a follow-up to initial tweet regarding Kurtzman's exit, Oliver Frank detailed that a source indicated that Kurtzman is enraged and has demanded that Section 31 show get the green light. You know, when you go yelling and demanding your bosses do something, and you go yelling and making demands. Um, that's a very unpopular move with, with bosses. So yeah, let's hope it has the desired result that us fans would love to see. The source indicated that Redstone rejected this demand. Probably good for us. The rumor came shortly at after news broke that the newly merged Viacom CBS planned to launch a brand new streaming service. Already after CBS Hall Access? Oh boy. The Hollywood Reporter describes it as an expansion of CBS Hall Access and that it will include Comedy Central, Paramount Network, BET, MTV, and CBS News. The service is expected to offer news and sports as well as scripted and unscripted content. Do you think they're going to rebrand Hulu? Because that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. That like they're rebranding Hulu. Now, mind you, this is the first time I've read this article. The streaming service is expected to compete with uh, Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, and upcoming HBO Max and NBC Universal's Peacock. Yeah, um, it's what they're describing sounds a lot like Hulu, so. Yeah. Indeed. Kurtzman did reportedly sign a five-year, $25 million contract with CBS back in June 2018 with the CBS Television Studios. President David. That's supposed to be staff saying. There is a very short list of writer, producer, directors that every film and television studios studio wants to be associated with and Alex and his secret hideout team are always at the top. You should put that to the bottom of the list, really. Don't want no secret hideout stuff. What do you make of this rumor? Do you think Kurtzman is out? Well, we can only really hope and pray to the Star Trek gods that Kurtzman is out. Just covering this real quick. You know, I find it amazing. I mean, it's, it's pretty much, it's a, it's a no-brainer. 
you give fans what they want. They're going to want to watch it. They're going to want to buy it. If you stick to canon and write a good story in Star Trek, and we're we're specifically talking about Star Trek, stay within the canon. Stay within the storylines that was already established. Stop trying to change them. People will want to buy your product. But if you keep on throwing out political PC crap out there and virtue signaling and you got uh, women talking down to men that are in a position of authority, um, that doesn't... Re- that The reason why I watch Star Trek is to... It doesn't reflect the real reality that's going on in the world. That's why it's called sci-fi. Star Trek is in the sci-fi niche and you know I want to escape from the stuff they talk about in the local news, the national news or whatever they're talking about or, or the latest fads they're talking about. You know that's not Star Trek. And that, that's not. Um, Star Trek was its own thing. They had their own thing. They had their own era. They got past certain um, human failings. Um, and it's just not its not Star Trek. And now when you want to get down to the ship and the warp, do you notice the ship was red with crisscrossing white stripes? What is that, a Van Halen ship? Someone's a Van Halen fan because someone likes Eddie Van Halen's uh, guitar. His red, his red guitar that's got the crisscrossing white, white stripes. Uh, that ship looks like Eddie Van Halen's ship. Call that the USS Eddie Van Halen, eh? And, uh, yeah. And then make that show about a rock and roll band that travels around space, you know? Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Make it all rock and rolly like Yeah. So. Now let's get to this here. Star Trek, what the Romulans are doing... In Star Trek Picard, the Romulans are becoming an even greater threat to the Federation now that they have access to Borg technology. The premiered episode of Star Trek Picard ended with the shocking reveal that the Romulans possess a Borg cube, and here's what this could mean for the future of the Alpha Quadrant in Star Trek Picard. Patrick Stewart returns as a former Enterprise captain and picks up the next chapter of John Luke's life after he retired from Starfleet. Yeah, we we state the quiet life, the vineyard, and stuff like that. Um, Dodge appears, you know, um, saying, "Oh, I feel like I know you, and I can trust you," and blah blah blah. And you have all that, and then um, yeah. Star Trek Picard also follows the events of both 2002 Star Trek Nemesis, the final. Star Trek The Next Generation movie where Commander Data sacrifices life to save Picard. You know, the 2009 Jar Jar Star Trek, you know, where the Romulan star went supernova. They, 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 they basically, there's no more Next Generation. All that technology, all that stuff that existed, it's gone. They're only showing us some of this, like, like the the old school Romulan uh, warbird actually a bird of prey you know and that's nostalgia that I'm sorry they, they may have been attacking that ship whatever the hell it's supposed to be called sounds a lot like the Rosinante from the expanse huge huge copycat I just feels like to me the inside looks a, very similar to the Rosinante it looks similar to the Killjoys um, ship, whose name is Lucy, and uh, and it looks very similar to the ship that's in uh, Dark Matter as well. And you know, so yeah, 
fixing broken people. Yeah, this makes sense. Borg Cube must contain thousands of assimilated Borg drones so as to cyberneticists for an android posing as one. Yeah, Soji, she's the twin of Dodge. Yeah. Must involve separating Borg technology from the organic life forms who were assimilated. Now, there's this mysterious place called the Pit in the Borg Cube, and I'm getting the feeling that they're considering it very dangerous. I'm just wondering about that. They left they left that kind of hanging. Mysterious. Like it's like what is up with that? And basically what are they going to do with the board, you know? And it, and they're do, they're doing it really badly. I, I feel like I'm watching NCIS at times. I feel like I'm watching a, uh, a one of those cop drama shows, you know. And uh, it's not Star Trek. It's Star Trek in name in all but name. So, Star Trek A Disaster at CBS All Access offer leaks. And not surprising. Star Trek leaks and rumors offer the franchise as a huge disaster, a mess at CBS All Access, and big trouble. And the way I understand it, um, not many licensees signed on. And I believe the licensees were for toys. Um, also, I think it—I think the licensees might be um, their advertisers. I chose to advertise with them. I think. Thought I heard someone mention something like that. But still, you know, it's—it's it's not doing great. You know, we'll, we'll go over to Metacritic and I'll show you the first episode. It, it's it's all right. But it's not really a Star Trek episode. Rumors of the franchise is a huge disaster to mess with CBS All Access and in big trouble. The Overlord DVD YouTube channel that put out those Captain Marvel and Brie Larson leaks and the Star Wars or White Skywalker leaks goes over the Star Trek leaks were posted to 4chan. And it offers that his own sources can state they are 100% true. Worth a mention in this in this leaker claim in the CBS All Access streaming service will be combined with a new Viacom CBS streaming service. And a few days ago, saw that Viacom CBS streaming service confirmed with details expected to be announced on February 21st. Um, that's a week from now. Check out the Star Trek leaks below. So yeah, let's let's go over let's go over to Metacritic real quick. So let's see here. Like all Star Trek written or produced by Alex Kurtzman, the show has good production value but is handicapped by ridiculous dialogue and a plot that makes little sense. It's supposed to be a mystery story. Um, it's supposed to be a Star Trek. The, the mystery should go should be the flavor in a Star Trek show. It shouldn't be the mystery would start with a little Star Trek flavor. You know? I don't get that. I don't get why that has to be that way. You know? So yeah, let's go to this next one. Maps and Legends got a 6.7. This got a 5.8, which is in the yellow. And I don't know that it deserves a 5.8. 6.7, so this episode must have been slightly better. So yeah, lower the number, the worse it is, I guess, huh? Show is too slow. I get there. I I get it. There has to be some foundation lane, but really, this is just not well done. Yeah, I would agree. I I would absolutely agree. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's definitely not well done. 
You know? Not, not, no. Definitely not. You know, and, and you know, it's funny that even the fan stuff is better than what CBS is dishing out. It's amazing. So we'll we'll see what the next episode of Star Trek P card will bring to us. But um, I, I'm giving episode one, give it a four. Episode two, I probably give it a maybe a five. Um, episode three, a five. Actually, I changed that. Four point five. Um, Four point five because um, when they finally got around to showing a ship in warp, it's like, what the hell am I watching? Star Wars? That's hyperspace. They're showing us hyperspace when a ship traveling at warp. Hyperspace and warp, two different things. And um, so, yeah, I really wanted to see the stars streaking by, like the traditional Star Trek shows and movies. You know, no, nope, didn't get that. So yeah, that's why I give a 4.5 to Episode Three. So yeah, um, should you watch this? No. No. So, we shall see you next time. Hail to the Phantom Menace, where Gary said it best, we do not kneel. And don't dox people either. It's not a nice thing to do, you know. Um, yeah. You shouldn't do stuff like that. You shouldn't dox people. Uh, you shouldn't dox private chats. Just got to say that right off the bat. You know. And also, silence is golden. Hey, little fan of Menace. Hail. Hail.